Good morning and welcome. Doug, hold the words for me. Good morning. Stand up next to me. Okay, it's a gathering song. We're going to sing, If You Believe and I Believe, the words for all of our songs are right there in your bulletin insert so that we didn't have to bring the hymnals down. songs now, out here in the open. Doug, stand up here. We start with Brethren We Have Met to Worship. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, uh, we have a lot of people that like praise and worship music, and this is a contemporary <laughs> praise and worship song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. We might be burning up out here. But anyhow, and you know what I hear is going on after worship? A picnic. We're going to have a picnic, fellowship picnic. Well, I've got news for you. No one needs to worry. I brought it all. <laughs> Do you think it all fits in here? You don't think this would feed all these people? Well, let me show you, my goodness. I've got five loaves of bread. One, two, three, four, five. You don't think that would do it? Well, goodness, 
because I thought that was a lot. And besides that, guess what? I brought two chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to make it? He's like, okay, we have it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't ask if you want to eat it. I said, are we going to make it with everybody? You're going to have to share. If you take it all around and break it up and give a piece to everybody, Charlie Beth, you get your share. <laughs> How much do you think that would be? Show me with your fingers. How much chicken nugget would you get? Look around, see how many people. Three what? How big? Yeah, it would be very small, wouldn't it? Well, we're a little better off with the bread. Let's see how many rows do we have? We got more than five rows, so this probably have to do a few rows. I don't know if the ushers counted yet, so we don't know how many people. But I would expect that would have to. Well, so you don't think that's going to do it? Do you think that, as you know, Charlie Beth's still hanging in there, we guess it's going to do it. You have faith, don't you? Yeah. Um, I think that you need not fear when we go inside. I already peeked, and some other people did remember. So we have all this and more. Well, that gets to the Bible part of the story. If you can imagine... You're um, on the hillside of the Sea of Galilee. Was it the Sea of Galilee, right? Okay, because there's lots of seas there. We're talking about Israel. Okay, the Sea of Galilee. And guess who is there to listen to? Jesus was there. Can you imagine going to hear Jesus? talk to you? Maybe Jesus would hold you and give you a hug? Well, anyhow, and guess how many people? 5,000 people. And Jesus took pity on them. He healed the sick. And he spoke to them. And they just went all day. Would you like to have church all day? No. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, don't worry, we're going to eat. Okay, well, anyhow, Jesus spoke to the people. He healed them. He saved them from their sin. And at the end of the day, I'm going to read from the Bible now. His disciples were with him, as usual. And here's what the disciples said. Now listen what Jesus said. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and they said, This is a far off place. I mean, like out in the boonies, we might say. You know what that means? We're out in the boonies. And it's already getting late, man. Send these crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Okay. Everybody was getting hungry. They've been there all day listening. Well, here's what Jesus said. They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Now, they looked around. They saw 5,000 people. And they said, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, I didn't get fish sticks. I brought chicken nuggets. I thought you might like that, Beth. Well, Jesus said, bring them here to me. And do you know what he did? He directed the people, all 5,000, sit down, make yourselves comfortable on the grass. And he took the five loaves, and he took the two fishes, or the two chicken nuggets in this case, and he held them up and he prayed to his Father in heaven, to God to feed this flock, crowd of people. And do you know what they did? The disciples brought up baskets, and Jesus filled them to where I'm sure that bread was just falling out on the ground. And they passed them around, and everyone ate. Do you think that's a pretty good miracle? Sure he is. But guess what then? They all ate, and everyone was satisfied. And after that, 
when the disciples went out to clean up the hillside? Guess how much was left? They picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. So not only did Jesus feed them, but they had leftovers. You think they wanted to come back the next day, maybe? Or just stay the night? But anyhow, that is how Jesus fed 5,000 people. Let's pray. Lord, help us to remember that you do provide our bread. Enough for everyone in the entire world when it comes to filling us with the faith we need and the knowledge we need and the kindness, all good gifts. And thank you for this wonderful miracle you performed at that time, showing the power of God and the strength within you at that time. And that all these people did come to you and spread the word so that we here, years later, thousands of years later, can be at Beaver Creek in the USA and to know of your word and your strength. Amen. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And the thing about that story is that even the Bible translations say it was 5,000 men. And so that doesn't even count every man who brought a woman and a whole bunch of kids with them. So that's the grand miracle. That it was probably more like 15,000 sitting on that hillside. We come to a time of sharing. Um, I know that Alda was in the hospital this week, but she is home as far as I know. Does anybody else know more about that now than I do? Yes. She, yeah. uh, she got back the day after. Right. Uh, and as far as I know, it was an issue with fluid. Yes. So while that's troublesome, it's not as bad as about a dozen other things. Yeah. And she was feeling fairly good, but uh, they'd advised her to stay out of the heat for a while. And so I recommend it, that she not be here today. Yeah, she, um, she was taking that seriously. So. She, um, she said, I told them what my problem was. <laughs> um, but she said all the heart tests were very good. So, Other concerns or joys you have to share? This is wonderful out here. Yes? Um, vacation Abby. Bible School was yes. a great joy this week. Um, it was a lot of fun. The kids had fun. And it was just a joy. Good. We so excited and learned so much about Abby, I actually wrote your name down. I was going to ask you about vacation Bible School. So I'm glad you shared. <laughs> Yes. Another yeah. joy is our retreat is coming up. <laughs> and I just wanted to let everyone know that I did put up a sign-up sheet um, in the front lobby. Um, if you all could put down if you're coming to the dinner on Saturday or if you're planning on camping. And that way we can kind of uh, plan for if we're catering the meal on Saturday evening. We need you to sign up for the retreat in August and... There was talk, at least if we, they can, you can know a number for Saturday night. There, there is some funds to maybe cater that meal, so you don't. Can have I ask to a couple of questions? Sure. When does it, when, what time does it start, and what about food? What if we're there more than that meal? Do we take our own food or? Right, Friday evening was kind of. Um, you want to stand up, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Let me talk about Friday evening. We're thinking. I'm thinking. I was having talked to Dan yet about providing hot dogs and everyone bring a side. Saturday we're talking about catering a meal. It starts Friday evening through Sunday morning. Um, and then the other meals. So there'll be two nights? Two evenings. Yeah. 11th and 12th. And we, camp, if we're camping, we'll be there two nights. Right. Okay. And then breakfast and lunch is, we're on our own? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the answer to that is bring five loaves. <laughs> <laughs> and if somebody needs food, they'll go to Bonnie Sue. I'm furnishing it all. Okay. There you go. There you go. I need extra food.
Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Other things to share? Yes. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Becca's been having some issues with her back, so we had an MRI, and they did find out she has a stress fracture in her lower spine. So we've got a lot of rest and recoup to go, so that's not easy for a teenager during the summer. And then next Monday, I'm having carpal tunnel surgery on my left hand, getting the other half completed now. <laughs> we'll remember both of you. Somebody else raised the hand. Yes. Yeah, just keep uh, in prayer. My grandma, she's been really nauseous this past week, mm -hmm. and uh, that my mom stayed with her this morning over at our house, and they went ahead and called the nurse. So just keep keep in prayer for her. Yeah, Annie is facing some probably not doing very well over the coming time and so keep keep Annie and Alice and the family in your prayers along the way. Somebody else raise the hand. Anne. I don't see mom here. Um, she is showing signs of depression. I will tell everybody so, so they'll know. And um, a little more confusion than usual. And it's probably I'm pretty sure why she's not here because I did speak to her this morning and she was coming. But, um, anyhow, I just want you to know that uh, she needs a little extra tender care on my behalf. And I know all of you are great at loving and understanding the elderly in our congregation. Yeah, I was going to say there are all kinds of small ways mm -hmm. that we can care for folks that can't get out so much. <coughs> A phone call, a card, in this day and age, not uh, some of us older don't do computer for our conversation. Uh, so, you know, try to remember that, uh, that a brief phone call um, is sometimes like, extremely supportive. And prayer. Yes. Um, and prayer. Yes. Keep remembering Christy and Aunt Ruth. Okay. Um, other things you want to share with each other we appreciate the people who are trying to put a video together mm -hmm. I did not know we were going to try to do that but I appreciate the, all the people that are doing that Reba. Keep the family of Weston Shank in your prayers. He had a bad accident this week and is really struggling for to get better. So. Okay. Weston Shank. Weston Shank. Yeah. Okay. Let us come before God in prayer. O wondrous God, pure joy and challenge. We are yours. You alone are the one who has given us this community of faith. You are reliable and mysterious. You are gentle and almost unknowable. Give us the courage to be aware of being more fully alive. Give us the patience to enjoy your presence with us. Give us hope to dream new possibilities. Give us the freedom to tell you that we are afraid. Put speech on our tongues to speak our needs to each other to delight in the visitation of an unexpected guest, to offer words which bless and protect life, to praise you and all your messengers who fly into our lives. Free us to accept our bodies, our minds, and our hearts as sheer gifts from you wondrously made, creatively developed, and delightfully enjoyable. You have made us who we are, and we rejoice in that creation. You have made us in your image, and we praise you for that power. 
We promise to listen deeply, to let out the laughter down inside us, to take pleasure, great pleasure, in your love for us, and to delight in passing on your care. We remember all those whose names we have lifted in these moments, and we promise to laugh at ourselves, to rejoice and make joy, and we accept the challenge to let you collide with us and thus allow you to change us into your glorious people. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Come, let us share all that you can. As a congregation, we will pass on our wealth of money, time, gifts, and abilities. always a wonderful storyteller. I'm going to read several verses. If you have a Bible with you, I'm in Matthew 14. I want us to think not so much about the feeding as how Jesus interacted with the disciples. After Jesus heard about John, and that's John the Baptist who met his death at the hands of the king, Jesus crossed the Lake Galilee to go to some place where Jesus could be alone. Does that sound familiar for some of us? We'd like to be alone after working hard. But the crowds found, up where, found out where Jesus went and they followed him on foot. And when Jesus got across the Sea of Galilee, he got out of the boat and what was in front of him on the shore was a huge crowd of people. Jesus looked at them, I have no doubt took a deep breath, and felt sympathy for them and healed everyone who was sick. That evening the disciples came to Jesus and said, this place is like a desert and it's already late. Let the crowds go home so that they can go to places, their homes or villages and buy food. And Jesus replied to the disciples, they don't have to leave. Why don't you give them something to eat? We generally rush on to the feeding of the 5,000, 10,000, or 15,000. 
Jesus here wants a chance to get away. He did manage to get into a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee. Jesus, like us, needs time alone, and we know from Scripture that often that is a time to allow God to speak to him, to encourage him in his ministries. But the crowds do not give up on finding or following Jesus. That's interesting, is it? We, would we give up? Would we say, oh well, he went to the other side of the ocean, we won't bother. But these people had heard the good news that Jesus was sharing. And they had seen God's power in him as people were healed of physical and mental and spiritual problems. And so these people set out to search and keep walking until they could find Jesus. And so apparently they arrived at the shoreline before Jesus did. Jesus gets out of the boat. He sees all these people who are so hungry to hear some kind of good news and to experience God's mercy and compassion. And so I think Jesus slows down, feels what the people are feeling, senses their continued suffering and pain, and their need for God's graciousness. And so Jesus spends that day healing anyone who came, all who came, Jesus offered healing. And so the day goes by and evening comes and the disciples are doing their work, the work of disciples, for they are paying attention to the crowd and they are paying attention to what God, Jesus is doing. They notice the concerns of the people and so showing their own compassion they go to Jesus and speak to him. Jesus, this place is dried up. There's no food here. We're out in the middle of nowhere. And night is com coming. Shouldn't you let the people go? Shouldn't we encourage them to go home, to move on, to go back to the towns where they came from so that they can get food? We know they must be hungry. And Jesus' reply, the people do not have to leave here. And then Jesus turns to the disciples and asks them a question. Why don't you give the people something to eat? You and I mo know most of the rest of the story, either from our own memories or from Anne telling us. Indeed, the story is wonderful because Jesus and the disciples and the people end up celebrating what we would call communion. For bread and fish were brought forward by a child who, like Mary, Charlie Beth, believes that you can be fed from a small amount of food. And Jesus takes that bread and meat in his hands and prays a blessing on the food. And Jesus begins to break the bread and passes it to the deacons, the disciples, to share with everyone. And they did. Why don't you give people something to eat? Here we are in this beautiful place, in God's creation. We enjoy the colors, the sounds, the warmth, our family and friends. And we realize we have gathered once more because we are hungry. Now maybe you would disagree with me that you don't come to church on Sunday because you're hungry. Maybe those are not the words you would use about why you come. But you come for some reason or other. 
you come for something. And I think that many of us come hungry. I think you and I in this day and age are hungry for good news. We are hungry for companionship, for friends and for kindnesses. We are hungry to know that our lives have meaning, that we're here for some reason, that we're a part of Beaver Creek and we don't know where we're going, but we must be here for some reason. We are hungry for direction, to know where we're going. We're hungry for acceptance and forgiveness for the things that have happened in the last years. And most, if not all of us here, are hungry for peace. Not just our own inner peace, but peace among all of us, so that we can say what we're hungry for and not feel embarrassed. Peace so that we know if we disagree, we will still be Beaver Creek. Peace that all of us are going to hang together even though we probably are as different as any group of people can be. And so this story from Scripture is a story of good news. And if you and I pause to listen and pay attention, we will see that God is reminding us that we are enough just as we are. The Bible does not say, nor does Jesus, that we will be enough when we get a new pastor. Or we will be enough if there are 90 at church next Sunday. Jesus says we are enough now. We can come to Jesus for healing and to fill our hungers. And God has given the resources, the resources, the bread and meat for us to be God's people in this place and in this time. Congregations who lose a pastor do not get free time. The gospel still has to be shared. We still need to live our lives and fill our hungers and learn from Jesus. And indeed, Anne is right. I have no doubt in the basement there is so much food. We don't need to even worry about whether there's enough. There will be abundance. Some of you have already talked about in gatherings that God keeps doing these very interesting things already. And one of those interesting things is that I visited Annie on Thursday. And I joked with Annie, and then we talked about the windows in that wonderful house. I told Annie, I want to move in next when I'm her age and have wall-to-wall -wall windows that look over that farmland that's being kept by her family. And before we, I left, Annie picked up her Bible and said, let me tell you some of my favorite scriptures. And she told me her favorite psalm, one of them, is Psalm 19. And so I wanted to say to Annie here today, and one of you family members can tell her, what wisdom Annie has. For in this moment, looking at that corn, the green grass, knowing that it has rained where some of us needed rain, the psalmist wrote, the heavens keep telling us the wonders of God, and the skies declare what God has done. Each day informs the following day, and each night announces the next. They do not speak a word. Everything around you does not talk like Elaine is talking. And there is never the sound of a voice. And yet their message reaches the whole world. 
And their message, all of creation, travels around the world. We're hungry for that. And we are also called to be part of creation that tells the wonders of God and what God has done. <clears throat> and so, in the coming days, I want you to not think so much about what you need to give to someone, although that remains a part of who we are as Christians. But I want you to be honest with yourselves about what you want what you need, what you're hungry for. Because if you and I don't know what we want from Jesus, we just operate sort of along, going along like it's always gone along. And there is nothing that we need or want that God does not want to know or already knows. I know in the past people have said to me, oh, but you don't want to pray for parking places. How do you know? How are you, God, that you decide what people can pray for and not pray for? Perhaps that helps God laugh. And especially if God gets to open up a parking space for you on Court Square, then what do you do? You prayed for it. Do you... Thank God for that, or go, oh, geez, well, you know, that person was leaving anyway. Be careful what you ask for. Because those people sitting that, on that hill wanted to be healed, and they were hungry. And Jesus fed them and healed them. And so while you consider what you are hungry for, Accept the gifts of nourishment from God, and when you are able, pass on the abundance of God's good news that you receive. Amen. We're going to sing together, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs>
blessing for the meal before we go up to share and people can eat here and in the church building. Any other announcements? Yeah, left. Praise God for all blessings flow. Praise God.